18 months with the M1 Mac Mini. Do I regret my decision to make this my first venture into the Mac world, or is it a match made in Cupertino? Hey, it's Andre, and this is the M1 Mac Mini. And for me, it's the best value desktop computer I've ever owned, but does that mean it'll be the same for you? I ordered it as soon as the November 2020 keynote had finished and got it delivered on launch day. And since then, I've been using it as my main and work from home computer, as well as editing most of the videos on this channel using two editing programs, which I'll talk about later on. I'm not gonna go too much into the depth of the specs on this M1 Mac Mini, other than to tell you it's the entry level configuration with the eight core CPU, eight core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory and the 256 gigabytes of internal storage. For me, 18 months on and at 6.99 it's still a bargain. And in very rare occasions you'll spot the odd one appearing on the Apple refurbished store for even more of a bargain at £589. For a product that, again, is only 18 months old, the way you'll get the refurbed from Apple to you, less the box that it normally comes in, should be presented in a nearly new condition. Just for this reason only, it should be a no-brainer if you're considering jumping into the Mac world like I did with my first Mac. Can't compare this Mac Mini to other Macs before this, like ones with Intel chips, because as mentioned before, this is my first Mac experience, having only ever previously used Windows computers. So, as a Windows user, using a Mac operating system did take a bit of getting used to, even for the most simple things, like the fact that the close and minimize window buttons are positioned on the top left instead of the top right and can sometimes disappear, or when you wanna open two windows side by side on your display, it's not as straightforward as dragging one to the left or right board of the screen and letting the system automatically know what you want to do. It's just those little things that you just have to learn when you're using the system. But thankfully, I'm now fully integrated into the Mac way of life. And personally, from a creative point of view, I prefer it. As well as its pricey, other major bargaining chip is its size. Just look how small it is, weighing only 1.2 kilos. This is just so light, you can even use it as a sort of portable option, moving just the box between desks, between offices, between houses, all because of its size. Where else would you consider a desktop computer being portable? If you've seen my previous videos on Mac Mini accessories, and if you haven't, just click up there. You may have seen a monitor mount that I prop the Mac Mini up onto my monitor, giving me even more portability, and together with the monitor, making it a sort of makeshift DIY iMac. The most fascinating thing about this Mac Mini is that when you see other videos where they've opened it up, you can see that design-wise, they could have made this Mac Mini even smaller, which intrigues me to think if and how they will evolve the design in the future, especially with new M chips that are going to more than likely become more efficient and more powerful. On the back, the port support should be enough for most users with two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and two USB A ports. I do find myself when I'm using a lot of devices like my camera, external hard drive, and other things all plugged in at once, that sometimes having that one extra USB C or USB A port would be perfect. But it can be solved by using multi port adapters and docks, which can give you even more options like alternative monitor connections and even card support. How I would have loved an SD card reader on this device, even like how it is at the front on the Mac Studio. But just looking at the front of this Mac Mini now, it just looks a bit bare, like it's missing something. But maybe in the next generation, you never know. Because of the well-documented HDMI issues that some users like myself have experienced connecting monitors via the HDMI slot, I only connect my monitor via the HDMI to USB-C cable instead, and rarely if I'm using an additional monitor, I'll use the HDMI slot as well. But thanks to macOS Monterey features like Sidecar, I most of the time use an iPad as my second screen. It's nice to see products still have a headphone port, and believe me, if you're doing any form of audio work on this, you'll be thankful for that port, because the quality of the built-in speakers isn't good at all. It's probably best described as tinny and hollow, without ever expressing any depth to the sound, so you're definitely going to need wired or wireless headphones or external speakers. The Wi-Fi 6 connectivity allows fast over-the-air data transfer using features like AirDrop, making this a must if you want to enhance your ecosystem and that ease of file transfer between your devices. So if you've got this, if you've got one of these, if you've got your AirPods, all connectivity is easy. 
For me, if I'm filming a video like this on my iPhone via Filmic Pro, as soon as I finish recording, I'll begin to transfer via AirDrop immediately. The file size usually takes about five to 10 minutes to transfer from this to this, depending on the size, which can sometimes be over 15 gigabytes. Just thinking about it, one thing I don't think I've ever heard other than a quiet flow in all the time that I've had this computer, and I could probably count those moments on one hand, is the fans. I mean, I wouldn't describe myself as a power user who's going to use it to its max and I wouldn't recommend this to someone who was but the most extensive tasks I put this Mac Mini through on a weekly basis is the video editing and still nothing. We know from benchmark testing that the M1 chip in these entry level Macs are fast, powerful and efficient for their power consumption at this base spec but how does that translate for normal users like you and I? The first instance of getting speed that you'll get is as soon as you press that power button within seconds you're at the login screen. When you do get in there, everything, every app just works without any or considerable waiting time. You'll find native and fully integrated apps and software that are even quicker. I predominantly use this computer for web browsing, word processing and video and photo editing. So apart from the video and photo editing part, we can assume that most people will use this computer for at least two of these options. For web browsing, I use a mixture of Safari and Chrome, but obviously being native to Apple, Safari unsurprisingly runs the quickest, but that flexibility and ease that you get with Chrome means I generally use it more. But having loads of tabs open on Chrome sometimes flags up a window and they clean my Mac app, which states that the system is running low on RAM, without actually ever feeling like the performance of the Mac Mini is affected compared to those same tabs being open on Safari. But the overall experience is a good one and I've never had an issue even with the content during web browsing like watching videos on YouTube or streaming music. For my day job I do a lot of word processing. I, through familiarity and ease of use more than anything, use the Microsoft Office suite of apps which work as well as when I use them on a Windows PC. The more labour intensive applications that are used to put a little bit of strain on the M1 chip is photo and more so video editing. The photo editing program that I use is Affinity Photo to make all my thumbnails for these videos. While photo editing I use the iPhone and iPad app, the LumaFusion right on the Mac Mini and the more demanding DaVinci Resolve which I edit almost every video that you see on the channel with. When it comes to the actual video editing, generally the only time I notice any variation in timeline playback quality is when I'm adding more simultaneous content to the timeline. Maybe playing one or two layered streams, whether that be videos or overlays seem to be fine, but the more and more data that's added, the playback gets a little bit stuttery. Yes, there are ways around this by adding proxy data for these type of videos, but those brief stutters are bearable. And it's another reason why if you're a power user, you wouldn't choose the base spec Mac Mini. If you've come from any Intel Mac previously and you do video editing, one of the more visible signs of performance improvement that you'll see is in rendering times. Take my video from last week, for example. Using DaVinci Resolve and using high quality 4K footage from my Sony camera and iPhone, the size of the files in the completed video with all the editing completed on this six minute video is about 15 gigabytes. And this was all rendered by the Mac Mini in just over 10 minutes. And that would have been while I was doing something else on the computer at the same time. For me, that's quick, but certainly dwarfed by its bigger, more evolved cousins in the M1 Pro, Max and Ultra, and the more powerful MacBook Pros and the Mac Studio. Amazing sell point number three, I think it's three, I've lost count, is the customization that you get with this Mac Mini. Not of anything internal, because once you've selected your spec, that's it, but with everything that you use with it. It's your choice what monitor you want, what keyboard and mouse you want to use, and what other additional options you feel is necessary for your setup. For me, I've got the monitor I wanted, I use the Logitech keyboard and mouse that I find most useful and comfortable, and that the only permanent device that is attached to the Mac Mini is my two terabyte external hard drive, which meant I didn't have to spend even more on expanding the internal storage when I was configuring my spec, so I was able to leave it as the base. Unlike with any iMac, if for example, something happens to the screen and it can't be replaced, then it means new iMac. Or if you've got a MacBook and if any of the keyboard, touchpad or screen go and can't be replaced, then you know, new MacBook. But with the Mac Mini, those support devices are separate and generally a cost a lot less than buying a whole new complete system. Years down the line, you might want a new studio display to use your current monitor. Easily done. Experience of using the current Mac OS monitor will be the same experience on whichever Mac you use, which for me, now I'm used to it and still learning things about the system is still a good, enjoyable one. 
I think this M1 Mac Mini is definitely a no-brainer if you've decided to get a Mac, but don't want to spend loads of money on a computer that, with the way that you use it, won't be utilising it to its full potential. So you're after more power and performance, and obviously a base Mac Mini wouldn't be for you, and you'd be better off getting a more specced up Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, or if you're looking for a desktop solution, or the more portable option in the M1 Pro or Mac MacBook Pros. Or if you can wait a little bit longer, then you can get the higher budget, much anticipated anticipated Mac Pro. But I mean, at this price, £699, I still think there's more under the hood in the engine of this tame beast. And yes, there are some negatives like the Bluetooth connectivity issue with certain keyboards and mice, and that HDMI issue I mentioned earlier. But the pros far more outweigh the cons. And with the prices of Windows PCs becoming more and more, why not make now that time that you take the plunge with this everyday reliability machine that is the M1 Mac Mini? Let me know in the comments below if you've taken a plunge or you've recently bought this as your first Mac. Click on this video if you want to see the best budget Mac mini accessories and press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.